everybody. Thank you for attending, for joining uh, tonight's classical Shadow Path Theater Classical Play Reading Club. Uh, we've been doing this for a few months now, and uh, we'll be continuing for a few months more before a summer break. Tonight's play is Hask Flower and, uh, by Gwen, Gwen Ferris Ringwood, an American Canadian playwright. Uh, Alex Crowley from Shadow Path will tell you more about her in a few minutes. Um, before we begin, I will read the uh, land acknowledgments. The town of Newmarket acknowledges that we are situated on the traditional territories of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Anishinaabe peoples, whose presence here continues to this day. We honor and acknowledge this land and its people. Uh, let's see. So, um, yeah, without further ado, oh, before I forget to mention, um, your audio and video is uh, muted automatically, but you will be able to participate at the end and ask questions via the text chat feature. So uh, Alex Crowley, the Artistic Director of Shadow Path Theatre, will um, let you know some more about the play. Alex? Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. It's good to see some familiar faces. And when I say that, I mean names, of course and some newbies, welcome. Um, yes, my name is Alex Karuli. I'm the artistic director of Shadow Path Theater. And let's see, back in May, 2020, we began a play reading club uh, where we would read classical plays by women because apparently nobody really knows that there were female classical playwrights. So we thought this was a good um, reason to begin a play reading club where we would read a play a month and then meet at the end of the month and discuss these plays. So part of that is this sister event, which brings some of those plays to light through a more deeper investigation, such as this enhanced play reading presentation. Now I say enhanced because we are bringing the world of the play to life via costumes and props and virtual backdrops and sound and music and all the bells and whistles so uh, we can help to share this experience. Um, the play tonight, Pask Flower, it runs for half an hour and after that, I will share a little bit of information about the influence of the playwright and her writing. As well, I will ask a few questions, just a few. And, um, and if you have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat box and we can um, interact that way as well. So I would like to first start with um, the biography of our featured playwright, who is Gwen Ferris Ringwood. She was born in Washington in 1910, and she died in British Columbia in 1984. She graduated from the University of Alberta with an honors English degree. She then worked at the Banff Center for the Arts, which is where she wrote her first play in 1935 called The Dragons of Kent. Ringwood's writing career spanned six decades and included short stories, poems, novels, radio dramas, musicals, history plays, children's plays. She pioneered community and educational theater in Western Canada. Her one act folk tragedy, Still Stands the House, was written in 1938, cemented her reputation as one of Canada's major 20th century dramatists. While in Edmonton during the war, she began to write Alberta folk plays. In 1941, she received the Governor General's Medal for Outstanding Service in the Development of Canadian Drama, and in 1982, published the first volume of her plays, becoming the first Canadian playwright to become anthologized. The theater in Williams Lake is named in her honor, and an award for drama given by the Alberta Writers Guild is also named for her. So tonight's play is called Pask Flower. It was written in 1939. Besides its own considerable literary and dramatic merits, Pask Flower is of interest for its close thematic proximity to Ringwood's best known work, Still Stands the House, as well as a play called Dark Harvest. 
For the three plays were not only written and produced in chronological order, their depiction of the relationship between a struggling wheat farmer and his wife also progresses and develops from play to play. All three dramas are placed in a prairie depression setting. And the play we're going to experience tonight, Pask Flower, is the second play out of this trilogy. Pask Flower is a one act play that involves a marital rift between a wheat farmer, Jake, and his wife, Lisa, and also a dark rivalry between Jake and his brother, David. A triangle of conflict emerges as secrets are revealed and hard decisions made. Ooh. Okay, so uh, before we jump into the reading, I would love to introduce our wonderful readers this evening. We will start with Noah Mendelssohn Aviv, who is playing the role of Lisa. And we have Latrell Farkasen, who is playing the role of Jake Hansen. We have Mishak O'Brien, who is playing the role of David. And of course, we have Misa Basada, who is our sound designer and audio engineer for this evening. So you're in very capable hands. I will pass you over to Misa to begin the play. Please enjoy. Sitting in the dark again, eh? Why can't you turn on the light? It's only just got dark, Jake. The days are getting longer. <laughs> Man finds little comfort in a woman who moons by the fire like a sick eel. I'm sorry, Jake. Thought David might be here by now. Perhaps he isn't coming after all. That would be bad with all the work you've gone to getting ready. He's been away so long. He may decide it's better not to come. Stay away for all of me. I hoped you'd welcome him this time. He's your brother, and there were hard words between you when he left. <clears throat> he maybe won't come now. It's getting late. No, he maybe won't come now. What are you crying for? By heaven, I'm sick of coming in to see that patient face of yours turned away, as if you had a sentence in live prison here. Look at me. Don't, Jake. Let me go. Why do you see mewling by the fire? Please, Jake. I'll let it go. You even have to have your woe, whatever comes. If it isn't real, you'll find a shadow that will set you weeping. But fire takes off the chill. I think March nights promise more warmth than they can ever give, don't you? Mm -hmm. Made a big deal today. Took over that section at the old Roebuck farms. You took Roebuck's farm? He never paid the interest on his debt. He never could. And so today, I took the land. But Jake, you don't need land. You've got more now than you can farm. 
I got six sections. I got Robux place. They're all on one block now. I'm hopeful that a long time. 4,000 acres lying in one piece. Next fall, we'll see me the biggest wheat field in all the country around. Did Roebuck take it hard? I don't suppose he liked it. He's been a good neighbor to us, Jake. He's a poor farmer for all that. You think I'd murder him to hear you talk? I'm not sure, but it will be a kind of death for him. Think how you'd feel. I don't farm like he does. But if you had your way, I'd have no land to lose. I didn't mean that. I'll pour you coffee. Can't bear to eat with me, I'll take you. I thought when it got late you'd eat in town, so I went on. David will be surprised to see this farm. It was in bad shape when he left. Not that he cared about the land. Would you be glad to see him, Jake? Well, I suppose. You'll have some notion why he comes, and it's not love that brings him. What brings him then? <laughs> Crying for money, I suppose. Well, I'll not let him have it. I worked to bring a living from this land for 19 years. What's mine, I've earned. It's not for me to judge, but if he stayed on here after dad died, instead of selling me his share for half his work, he'd have a living now. You never rested till you got his land. The more fool he reaches to the moon. The rest of us could be content to farm. Not David, he must be a doctor. But that's what he should be, Jake. He's worked hard. You could always see things this way, couldn't you? Never mind. You don't want me to share things with you, Jake. You need to tell him of that deal I made. If he thinks I've got something laid away, he'll try to get along. I hardly think you have a cause to worry. It's been five years since David asked your help. And it will be long before I give him any. Jake, what's come over you? He is your brother, born of the same stock as you. Does blood mean nothing to you? I've got to buy machinery for that new place. It's my job to see that the land out there is clean and sown with wheat. That takes money. Oh, it's not only money. When David wrote that time, a friendly letter, just asking how we were, you wouldn't answer. You answered, didn't you? That was enough. He wanted to hear from you. You always tried to make me look away. Now that I've got somewhere, I've not had him come whining to me to get him started by some broken down practice for him to butcher people. I thought perhaps you'd let the old scores die. The things you've got against him are so little. A stupid quarrel or two. The rest is in your mind. I'm not giving the fancies. He told me how you felt about the dog. Sure, he told you. Now, that's the only one thing, though. But suppose I'd done that to him. Suppose I'd gone to where he stood in a group of men, gone blazing with anger, called him a beast, a red-eyed brute. Those are the words he used because I shot a dog that killed five sheep of mine the night before. He didn't know about the sheep, Jake. He was only a child then. He didn't know you did it because you had to. No, he thought I liked to. Thought because I took my own safety that I have no feeling to compare with his. <laughs> well, maybe I haven't. Maybe you, he, and white-faced dreamers like you have all the corner on all the feelings in the world. And we poor clod shufflers who have, a dig, have to dig the ground or slit a hog's throat or stick a bloated cow have to do this. I'll tell you, to survive, we've got no feelings. Jake, I didn't know. I'll let it go. You feel the same? I've seen it in your eyes. I thought you stiffen when I touch you and grow quiet like a bird with a broken wing when you put your hand on it. I've been submitting patient duty. That wasn't always true. No, I see things. If I were half the brute you think me, I'd have killed you for that long ago. Jake, when I came here eight years ago, I thought we'd make a home. I thought you needed me. If the baby had lived, things would be different. I know that. He'd be three years old tonight. But since he died, You've grown to care for nothing but your land. 
and the power you wring from it. A man can get more warmth from an unplugged field that welcomes his hand than from a woman who shuts herself away, peers at him out of the corner of her eyes, expecting the words from him. I didn't shut myself away no till you. Is. Maybe we can try again. As if there'd never been these dreary years. Begin all over. I'm older, wiser now. We'll go along the way we have, I guess. No worse off than that. Or we could call it all a mistake and go our ways. <laughs> That's what you want, isn't it? I won't give you that. Jake. Please, Jake. We took a child to raise. A boy. I've thought of it through these long winter nights. When we've sat alone, so far apart as to be nameless to each other, a child would fill the house with laughter. Perhaps the love a child would bring could stay this thing that's eating at our lives. I'll leave to no stranger's son the land I work for. He wouldn't be a stranger's child for long. We'd have so much love to spend. It wouldn't matter that he wasn't ours. I'll take no bastards here to bear my name. That's my last word. Sometimes I wonder if you're human, Jake. And if you care for anything on earth besides your land. You said enough, Liz. Enough, I say. I can stand so much and then no more. I'll have my say. If we're to live here in this house together, it's better that we just know how we stand. For every acre of ground you've bought, Jake Hansen, you've lost a little of your soul. The hand of every man with whom you deal is raised against you. You drive a hard bargain, Jake. That's your boast. Fate drives a hard one, too. You've traded all the good in you for your land. More land, you'll never have enough. I've had enough of this. Stop it, I tell you. You think it'll drive me mad so I'll let you go? Then you'll free, be free of me. That's what you want. But I won't let you go. Even though you come to fear and hate me, though you hide from me behind your eyes, I'll never let you go. Jake. Your eyes are as blue as a field of flax or dew on it. But in an hour, the flowers fall as if they've never been. And that's the way it is with you. When I come near you, hide from me. You take the light out of your eyes and hide and assess me, man. Jake! Jake! I didn't mean that, Liz. Don't leave me. You're safe with me. I didn't mean to hurt you. That's David, Jake. You let him in. I'd rather he not see me just yet, Jake. Well, Jake, I'm home again. How are you, brother? I'm well. How's it with you? Fine. I'm a bit muddy from that hole down by the gate. I had to push the car a little way. Where's Lisa? Upstairs. She'll be there in a moment. It's good to see you, Jake. How far did you come today? Sit down. 300 miles. It wasn't bad. And I'm still glad to be here. Lisa's done a lot for this old house. Serves its purpose. Remember when we were kids, how bad it got. We broke up all the chairs doing acrobatics. And after mother died, nobody cared as long as we had a place to sleep and eat. Lisa's made it warm and home-like. Well, Jake, how are things going? Ah, uh, the farm is much the same from day to day. Little talk of always work to do. They stay in time, you have so much land that you could ride from sun to sun and not get around it. Hardly true. I brought up all warm farms, they let it run down. More work than profit than up till now. <laughs> You've got dad's eye for business, I see that. Boy, I wish I had it. What do you come for? Money? Why? No, I... But don't you want me here? Come a long way for a make 
to make a social call. So it's that way. You never forget old grudges, do you, Jake? You never did when we were kids. Before I go, I'd like to tell you this. I came because I'm leaving for the Yukon Saturday. I wanted to see my home before I left. I wanted to see you and Lisa. We're the only two left now, Jake, and strange as it may seem to you, I thought I'd like to visit you and Lisa before going north. I'll go now. No, no, stay. Uh, I say things. Things are not always what they seem in words. Lisa would like to see you and she's been shut in close. And uh, I'll be ready to forget old scores. If it is as you say you come, well, we are brothers. <laughs> we didn't always have to find, find it hard to talk. I'd like to have you stay. And if you need money, uh, I could help you with something. Thanks. I don't need money, Jake, but thanks. Then you'll stay? I can't stay long. I have much to do tomorrow, eh? David. It's good to see you here. It's good to be here, Lisa. How changed you are. I like you this way. Changed? You mean I'm older? Yes but something else. Don't you see it, Jake? Uh, uh, less lanky than he was. <laughs> Filled out some. Definitely got older. <laughs> Five years would take its toll on all of us. How long it seems since you've been here with us. Have you come home to stay? No, Lisa. I've been telling Jake about my plans. I'm headed for the Yukon on Saturday. I wanted to see you before I go. The Yukon, that's so far. They say up there the Northern Lights shoot clear across the heavens. I read the, just the other day, you go on Saturday. I start my first practice there. You got to stay and start up here. And they need more doctors, I can help you some. Why Jake, how wonderful. But could you David? No. It's good of you, but this other beacon, it's a chance to try it in a hard country. If you make good, well, there's no money in it, but you'd feel, oh, I don't know. I know. Jake feels that way about the land. He always has. It's something to master, and if you fail, it breaks you. Yes. But you haven't failed, Jake. I never saw a cleaner farm than this. Something different than it was, all right. I'll show you around tomorrow. Where are you going, Jake? Gotta see to those old pens. It won't take long. Oh, Robux place has run to weeds. I saw it coming out. It's bad. Does he still tell tall stories and dream dreams of a big crop he's going to have next year? He's looking older. He used to pull his hat down over his eyes and drive along, cursing his horses with kind of tender chance. <laughs> Never see you can't farm that much land with horses. He wouldn't buy a tractor. He let the place run down. Maybe he doesn't toil much, but he'll always get along. He bought more than, he, than his land was worth. We followed that man like pups when we were kids. Remember, Jake? He'd take us fishing every sunny day. I'll try to get over to see him before I go. You'll find him changed. All of us have changed, David. There have been hard years. It's a poor farmer with no excuse. That station is the best help soil in all the country, but he couldn't keep it up. You mean he sold it? No, he bought it on it. Till he lost it, I own it now. You own it? but he's still farming it. I'm putting Johnson on it. Robux working there. He gets his room and board and some to spend. You shouldn't have done that, Jake. I renewed his note once. He couldn't pay. 
the weeds were spreading from his palm to mine. If I hadn't taken it some other wood. Jake, he helped dad buy this place. You can't put him to work as a hired man on his own farm. Dad paid off him in interest. You don't need that land. You said if you fail to conquer the land, it breaks you. Well, he failed. You're a hard man, Jake. And if I am? You'd feel a lot better if you'd help him instead of taking all he had away. Did you come here to tell me how to do? No, but I'll say what I think. It will do you no good. I did. I need that section. Now I've got it. David, Jake, don't talk of it anymore. You know it's not in you to agree. I'm sorry, Lisa. But if Jake thinks I'll stand by and praise him for his rotten deal, he's wrong. I never asked for any praises from you. No. And praise or blame won't move you from the path to what you want. Oh, David, the harp singer, the gentle shepherd boy. Don't, Jake. You stay out of this. And you, if you're so broken up about John Robo, why don't you buy the farm and give it back to him? I'd do it if I could. When I have, when I have need and want for your advice, I'll ask for it. We never get along. He always thought I held him in contempt. It wasn't true. No, he, he tortures himself, David. It's as if he wanted everyone to think the worst of him. I shouldn't have come. Don't say that, David. Well, I'm glad you've had good crops these last years. Yes, it's meant a lot to us after the drought. I'd better get your room ready. Jake saved my life once. We were swimming in the river after school. He cried after he got me out and swore at me for being so much trouble. He never told me. Lisa. Don't, David. I tried to believe I came here to see the old place. I came on your account. I know it now. No. It was on your account I went away. David. You've changed. You're not happy like you were. It's in your face. I'm not sure that happiness is the thing to look for. I'll clear the table now. Don't shut me out with words. David, you mustn't. I wish you hadn't come. I had to come. I thought when I went away before I'd see you in face again. It's haunted me day and night since I left you. Has it been that way for you? David, I'm tired. Has it been so with you? You've been in my thoughts more than I wished for. I can't bear to see you look like this. These years have done something to you. Jake has hurt you. Don't blame him. He loves me better far than I deserve. Oh, it's something in myself some restlessness that won't be satisfied. I thought a child might bring me peace, but then our child died, mine and Jake's, and there wasn't any more. That did something to us both. Don't ask me for love, David. I haven't any love to give. I've come asking. I've wandered half across the world hoping that space or time would put a veil between me and my memory of you. Now I've come back asking. There might have been a time, had things been otherwise, we might have found together something to live by. Not now. But it's wrong for you to stay chained here. In the end, it will destroy you, Lisa. Sometimes, in summer, <laughs> When the wind raises the dust like smoke, I've traced your name there on the ledge, tried to hold on to some remembered beauty, something you gave me in your voice and smile when you were here before. Then I'd see the dust blot out the name I'd written. I took it as a sign it was a dream I'd had, having no meaning. Come with me, Lisa. I couldn't go and leave Jake here alone. He has his land. 
That's where his heart is, Lisa. He doesn't want it that way. Something put scars on him, something long ago. It's too late to take away his hurt. Come with me, Lisa, before you're hurt too. Oh, David, it's been so long. You've been under my thoughts and I, without you, I've not been myself, but something lost in darkness, a cry flung on the wind, asking no recognition. You said together we could find something to live by. Will you come? David. Oh, I'll be good to you and keep you safe. I'd make you glad you came. I'd build a house with windows towards the sun and make you glad you came. David, where did you find them? Pask flowers, they mean it's spring. Most years they don't come out till Easter. I love them so. The hill below the schoolhouse, they always come there first. And I've let them wilt because you didn't tell me. I didn't bring them, Lisa. It wasn't you, but it must be. Tell me you brought them, David. I didn't bring them. Oh. Lisa. No. It was a dream. I'm sorry, David, but he brought them. He remembered, and he brought them. Lisa, you love me. Say it. No. For a moment, a flame mounted in this room, but it has nothing to feed on, David, and it dies. I've lived with Jake through drought and wind and rain. I held our child in my arms three years ago tonight. And he brought me flowers like these. He picked them on the hill, the first ones out. I'm held here not by duty, David, as I thought, but something else. By some blind need Jake has for me and I for him. I thought to break that tie, but years don't go down before a moment's bidding, David. All the years we've lived crowd round us always and hold us on the path that we must go. And mine lies here. Forgive me. Then it's finished. Yes. When I'm old, I'll remember your hands holding these flowers. Call it a dream, David. That was all it was. Saw a coyote slinking across. I'll see if I can get a shot at him tomorrow. It's been around here twice this week. I heard one howling in the night. I'll go now. You're leaving? I'd better go. I have much to do when. I didn't mean to get so riled up over, over old road books. I thought it over. You and Liz are right. I'll let him keep his land. Why, Jake? He won't be sorry, Jake. So uh, if you're going to because of me. Uh, it isn't that, Jake. When you came back tonight, I didn't want you here. But out there, uh, outside of the walls, I, I think better. Things look clear somehow. For what is worth to you, I, I don't hate you, David. You're my brother. Thanks, Jake. That's worth a lot to me. I'll think of you both and write. Goodbye. 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 Liz, there's something you have together. 
you and D. I'm outside. A man can feel out other things besides his land, uh, bigger things. Did you send David away because he pitied me? And you knew? Not all rock and clay. Yeah. And when things happen to you, it's in your face. It wasn't pity, Jake. I'm glad. Thank you for bringing the Pask flowers, Jake. You didn't tell me. Oh, I forgot about those. They were growing there on the big hill. They always come there first. You brought them to me when the baby came. Thank you for remembering, Jake. Sure gave them to you when I came in. Little Wilton now. You better throw them out. No, I want to keep them. Pask flowers. Now I know that spring has come again. Welcome back, everybody. Um, that was Pask Flower by Gwen Ferris Ringwood. Um, I'll just chat a little bit about um, the influence of Ringwood and her writing. In 1938, while studying playwriting in North Carolina, Ringwood created the spooky one act masterpiece, Still Stands the House, which is one of the most frequently performed plays in the history of Canadian theater. In 1939, the play won at the Dominion Drama Festival. That same year, Ringwood became the director of dramatics at the University of Alberta. Ringwood was hailed originally as the upcoming Canadian playwright of her generation precisely because of her ability to write like a man with a tone that is somber, austere, and tragic. Hmm. Still Stands the House is celebrated for its tragic grandeur, its resemblance to the plays of the Irish Renaissance and American folk play tradition, as well as its depression prairie setting and its poetic realism. Ringwood was credited with spreading the folk play movement northwards from the States up to Canada, since she was one of few playwrights who worked consistently and impactfully in both countries. She introduced folk theater to specifically Western Canada as she explored specifically the Western mystique and its people. This in a way served as a documentation for this way of life. Her works give us a deeper sense of the influence of the Canadian prairies on its people. How simple and stark life is on the prairies, which in turn breeds such stoic people. As a result, the Canadian Playmakers was formed with Gwen Ferris Ringwood as president in the early 1940s. Maybe you are asking, what is folk drama? It is defined as the drama of the conflict of man with the forces of nature. Though Gwen Ferris Ringwood is clearly aware of the immensity of the challenge which brings the prairies this does not destroy her confidence that the spirit of human beings is unconquerable. She was a pioneer in Canadian theater, writing at a time when few Canadian plays were being written and produced, especially those by women. Also predominant in Ringwood's plays are female protagonists and social issues, especially in her later plays. So Pask Flower is one of her earlier plays. Ringwood's success validated the Canadian little theater movement by producing a theatrical product, the Canadian folk drama, that critics could comfortably compare to other great dramatists. As late as the 1960s, she was still one of the very few Canadian playwrights, along with Robertson Davies, who was consistently mentioned in literary surveys as a significant dramatic voice in the first half of the 20th century. 
She has greatly contributed to the regionalist folk play movement who felt that their own theatrical thinking and practice opposed and offered a necessary alternative to, to New York's commercial theater scene. So as I mentioned, Pask Flower is uh, part of a trilogy. Dark Harvest is the play that um, follows Pask Flower. And actually Dark Harvest is, um, it's, uh, she takes the same characters and just extends, she extends Pask Flower into uh, dark, a three act play called Dark Harvest. So, um, you know, the way that this play ends that you saw here this evening isn't necessarily what happens with these three characters. For example, David actually comes back into the same town and starts his medical practice, which you can imagine causes lots of friction and tension between the three of them. And uh, well, I don't wanna spoil the ending or anything. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, but I would like to invite our readers back if you could just turn your um, videos on readers. Thank you so much. Um, because I do have a few questions and this is for attendees and readers. So attendees, you can just uh, type in the chat box. These are uh, easy yes or no questions to begin with. Yes or no? Have you heard of Gwen Ferris Ringwood before? Has anybody ever heard of this noteworthy playwright who has work spanning six decades across genres of the performing arts, who has created movements in Western Canada? No, anybody? And the readers, if you have, you can just raise your hand. Um, I had never heard of her before, so this was all uh, new to me. Um, you could say one word or a couple words as your answer for this next important question. What do you think are the themes of this play? What are the themes of this play, Pask Flowers. Don't say flowers. Does anybody have any ideas what the themes are? Okay, we have love, loss, redemption. Hey, those are actually <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. Loyalty. Rediscovered love. Ooh, okay. Some variations of love. Family relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, David, uh, or, yeah, is another one. Uh, yeah, with uh, David's character not giving up on uh, who he loves and what he wants. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Noah, something to do with the life urge, right? life in the land and the life of a baby, the life in a, in a marriage. Yeah, life yeah. force. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Literal. Uh, definitely say fear. Um, fear on everybody's end. From I know for Jake, maybe it's, it's fear that nobody else is gonna really accept him for who he is. Um, fear for David, going to a new place, new scenery, as well as not being with Lisa. Maybe that's the love of his life for him. And Lisa, fear of, you know, not not having a child again, but also not being enough for Jake, knowing that maybe David can treat her better as well. Yeah, um, when I did my research, uh, love was the answer that came up because that is what all of the three characters want. They really wanna be loved um, and that's what they search for, that's what they seek. I really, uh, you know what I love about this play specifically is um, it's very harsh play. It's harsh because of the prairies and the condition of the life that they're that they're living, um, and and the behavior of some of the characters. Jake is a very rough character, but the language is also kind of balanced with the poetry and the poetic dialogue. And I really love that juxtaposition of the, some of this uh, poetic words that even the character Jake says sometimes. It's, you know, it's just such an interesting, um, uh, Maisa? 
I know you said we're not allowed to say flowers, but um, the the what the flowers represent, like he understands her, and 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 there's a lot to her that that he that he brings, and she forgets because because she gets so caught up in the harshness of of their relationship and their life, she forgets that he remembers what what makes her happy, and he you know so. He, I think that's a theme is, is like re remembering what, what, what the foundation of your, of your relationship is. And, and, and that's the strength of it. Okay. Yes. Agreed. Next question. Jake or David? Jake or David, who would you pick? We saw that Lisa picked Jake. Oh, one for Jake, two for David. <laughs> Jake or David. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't decide. Oh, I think David's in the lead here. Well, I don't want to say anything, but if you ever get a chance to read or experience Dark Harvest, you might be pleasantly surprised at the outcome. Um, next question. <laughs> David is a safer choice. I like that one. Um, <laughs> uh, why do you think that the play is named Pasque Flower? Anyone have any thoughts about that? Mishak. Uh, kind of what um, Asai was saying with the whole, the significance of something so little as like the, I guess, pivoting point with Lisa's decision in this uh, play itself was the fact that Jake did remember the past flowers and I did not, you know? So I think that's why um, that's the title of it because that was something so small as past flowers was literally the um, underlying determining factor um, of her decision. Um, I feel like a lot of times in relationships you can, people can forget why they love each other and why they're even together um, through all the chaos and things that happen. So the fact that it comes around once a year, um, flowers bloom, when you see something bloom, it does catch your eye. And back to piggyback off everybody else, it's that reminder of, oh, this is what this is why we love each other. This is because we share this moment. You remember something like this that somebody else would not. That's how I see it. I also think that the flowers are rooted in the earth and in that farm. And I think in some ways, Lisa's decision and her connection to Jake is connected to the farm and to the home. And I think that's part of, part of what, it's part of the whole package that, that is keeping her. And it's part of what she loves, I think. And it's, somebody said that uh, David's the safer choice. I think, I think for that time and place, we're supposed to ultimately see Jake as the safer choice. We don't really know where David's going to fly off to, but we know that Jake is part of the earth. If I may read a comment over here, Victoria says, it is a flower of spring, which represents renewal. Yeah, I also think it's a symbol. I think it's definitely uh, symbolic. And it's also about uh, like, a tribute, a memorial to the child, to the death of the child as well. Um, yeah. And very interesting comment, Noah. I think you're right. We have to remember that this um, is a play that was written uh, in 1939 and Jake appears to be the, the more secure choice because he is a successful farmer, um, getting more and more successful every day. And David is off going who knows where, being this entrepreneur doctor, <laughs> just not as safe at that time. Um, okay, here's an interesting one. Who, uh, who is, whose story is this? Who do you think this play is about? Like, who is the protagonist in this play? Is it Jake? Is it Lisa? 
is it tape fit? Thoughts? Um, I think it's Lisa's story um, because uh, she, she is faced with a decision to make. And um, I feel like she, she plays like a very strong role in what happens um, in the before and the after, um, you know, she's also like the focal point of most of the, the dialogue and the situation that's going on in the, in the place. So I feel like it's Lisa and um, demonstrating, uh, let's say for um, a woman such as herself, the decisions you have to go through um, and the, the tough choices that you have to make, the temptation that you face um, throughout your life. Yeah, I agree. Uh, in much of my research, it did suggest that this is Lisa's story. However, in the stage directions of this play, and I always find this odd, it starts with Jake Hansen, and then it introduces his wife, Lisa, and then it introduces his brother, David. So just from a literary perspective, it, it seems to be Jake's story. Um, but at the end of the day, I do think that it is about Lisa. And being caught in the middle, says somebody, I, I think that's part of it too. And a lot of the action is um, catered towards, towards Lisa. She also starts and ends the play. Mm. It starts with her grieving and it ends with that sort of scene of rebirth or renewal, mm -hmm. as somebody mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you see her journey, right? Um, how... This is for the readers, whoever wants to answer, feels chatty. Uh, and this is the last question, um, unless there's anything from our attendees, but uh, how did this play impact you? I mean, none of you had known this play right before, so I'm assuming you didn't know the any of her other plays, which were many, many, many. <laughs> um, anyone wanna talk about what it was like to work on this play? Uh, I, I very much enjoyed working on it um, just from beginning to end. Um, there's a lot going on that it allows you to dig deep into. Um, just from starting with Jake's perspective, you, I had this great day, came home and I wanna greet my wife, but I come home to the same stuff that I, I'm tired of seeing. And that's kind of what sets everything uh, um, awry is because you're moping every day, what more can I do other than what I'm doing? What's, why is it not good enough? Um, and on in that same note, you see that Jake's not realizing that you are hurting, you're hurting Lisa uh, with your the way your actions are, the way you're behaving towards her. So um, it was good to, to dive into that aspect. And also was, I was surprised as I went through it to even see Lisa choose Jake uh, at first, but um, more and more I read it, I understood, yeah, this is where your stability is. This, something as small as these flowers is big to her, it's a grand thing that David very much could have been, hey, said, hey, yeah, yeah, I took those, I brought those, but for him, he chose the high road and was more honorable about it. Yeah, and I also like that Jake, uh turns to the land because he's got nobody else to turn to. Like the land is what he gets a reaction from, a positive response because it's growing and it's thriving. And that's how he feels validated as a man to always turning to his land. And that's why he loves his land. <laughs> but, but, but I liked his evolution where he was able to let go of, of like me, 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 and, and give back, which is also felt like he, he's ready to, to, to be a, a, a family again. You know, like that, that was all part of his um, opening up. Um, I think for me, it's, it's very nice to put into perspective um, love languages um, that you see throughout this, this play. I think, um, Jake and David communicates through different um, love languages. And I think that's one of the things that kind of, you know, gets um, Lisa a bit mixed up 
because I feel like David is the one the type to give the words of affirmation, which might be how Lisa likes to communicate despite um, Jake giving it through, um, I think it's like good deeds or acts of service and all these other things. It's like I'm giving you stability. I'm giving you these acts of service and stuff like that. You don't need my affection. You don't need my words of affirmation. I got everything else here going for you. Whereas Lisa is like, I'm grateful of that, but like you can throw this whole land away as long as you're showing me that you love me and you this and that, you know? So I think that it's like this play gives you like a, a, a another perspective of how important it is to understand your significant other's love language and um, being able to properly communicate that. So I think that it was nice. It was very insightful into that. I agree. I, I don't think they had the love languages back in the 1930s. That hadn't come out yet. So uh, this is awesome. I, I loved the uh, I love the conversation, and I want to thank everybody for um, for being here. Before I before we uh, sign off, I always love to end with a little quote from our playwright. <clears throat> Gwen Ferris Ringwood once said, when the pasque flowers come out, we know that it's really spring at home. Until then, we're never sure. And after the isolation of the long snow-locked winter, spring means more to us than to any people in the world. Rob. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. Uh, and thanks all to all the actors as well. Thanks to all the attendees for attending. And um, just a reminder that this is the first Thursday of each month. So the next play will be on April Fool's Day. Um, I don't know if you have the title picked out yet, but when we do, we will be advertising that in the next week or so. And uh, we hope to see you all there. So um, thanks again for coming. And we'll let some music play us out before we end the world.